Hello and welcome back to this series on named entity recognition for the purposes of the digital humanities. In the past few videos, we've been looking at some of the challenges and solutions to creating an NER pipeline for Holocaust documents. We are going to continue with that in this video, and we're going to build off the code from the last video in which we created the main NLP object, which was our blank model that was going to be our, our main pipeline for everything that we were doing. And if you remember, we at, took the spacey model, the EN core web small model, we grabbed the NER pipeline and we kind of added our own custom little features to it by eliminating the date GPE or only using the date GPE and NORP. Uh, national or religious political entity is, I believe, what it stands for. Things like Germans, uh, etc. So in this video, what we want to do is we want to kind of build off of what we've done. And in this video, we're going to be looking specifically at how to extract and find person tags. So people in documents. And I want to do that. Uh, and I'm, throughout this video, as we do this, we're going to introduce a few key concepts. You're going to learn about accuracy uh, and the ways in which we measure accuracy in uh, NER or NLP or machine learning in general. We're going to talk about precision, recall, and F scores. And we'll be going over that in just a few minutes. So what we're going to do is we're going to demonstrate kind of the strengths and weaknesses of off-the-shelf spacey models on uh, the person tag and Holocaust documents. And for this video, we're going to be using this document over here on the right, which is just, uh, I think it's a good chunk of an oral uh, testimony with a Holocaust survivor. So a text that's going to have a lot of named entities in it that we need to extract. And to demonstrate kind of what we're doing here, all this is, is this script is just, I'll, I'll leave it on the GitHub repo for this whole series. All it is, is just loading a small model. It's opening up that test document, and then it's going over and just iterating over the entities and only printing off the person entities, because that's all we're interested in for this video. What I want to show you when we run this is kind of some of the strengths and weaknesses of the small model. And then I'm going to show you the large model to demonstrate how these uh, weaknesses kind of transcend all of the models and how they were trained. So if we go up to the top, we'll see that we have 1,144 uh, people identified in this text. That's very good. However, it has some problems. If we go down the list, we'll see the first one is Erwin Baum. Look, it's that's a person. Randy Goldman, that's a person. And we see this going down on the list. We see um, Janusk, uh, I, I apologize for my mispronunciation here, um, Korsuk, and we have this number one at the end. This is a result of poor textual cleaning. I have not cleaned this text at all, and for a good reason. I want my model to be able to still work well on unclean data. And I'm going to show you some tips and tricks how we can add some custom functions into the pipeline to do some post-cleaning and to eliminate digits from a person's name. It's pretty simple and pretty straightforward, but something that you might not know off the shelf. And if we look at we in this document, we try to find the first instance, you'll see that this one is right here. And this is an instance of how this text isn't actually cleaned. It's keeping, it's been OCR'd, and I suspect what's happening here is this one is the page number that's still being kept into the document. And this is a common problem with OCR texts. You're going to have things like page numbers randomly placed at the end of a sentence or in the middle of a sentence, and you need to figure out ways to get rid of that. I'm not going to be concerned with cleaning texts in this video. I've got a lot of other videos on that. For now, I want to focus on how to clean up the NERs that are found and extract good NERs. So that's that one problem that we can see with this is the unclean text. If we go down the list, Israel Gutman, a person, uh, uh, Echek, that's a person. Uh, Zid, uh, I believe that would be a person. Uh, Charles Messenger. If we go down this, we're seeing we're seeing people. Like th these are good. I mean, obviously you're going to have some mistakes. So Steph uh, uh, Wilsniak has the seven. Again, same thing that I explained before. These page numbers being kept in the unclean text. But if we go down the list, we start seeing some kind of problems, right? So we're going to see Encyclopedia Judaica. Okay, that's not a person. Ed. Period. Not a person. These are instances of of failed uh, false positives, what we would call them, false positives. So if an entity that has been tagged that is not actually an entity, that's a false positive, as opposed to a true positive, which is an entity that has been tagged and is in fact that entity. All right, so let's go down the, down the list. Sleeping Beauty, that's a person, but my suspicion is in context, it's probably referencing uh, the book, maybe. I think Sleeping Beauty, I think... Uh, Yep, so it's it's the title of a um, of a play. It looks like in this context. Again, 
I'm not going to expect the model to be able to figure that out really accurately. This is the small model that has no word vectors loaded into it. If we go down the list, we see continue. We continue to see some false positives pop up, uh, such as Plonsk. This is the location, uh, Poland. And so we see it consistently being labeled as person. What we're going to have to work on is figuring out how to adjust our pipeline so that Plonsk and things like that are not identified as person. And if we keep going on the list, we see more and more disturbing results. And this is something that I want to personally eliminate from this NER. You can imagine going down, if someone who is not familiar with machine learning is using an off-the-shelf machine learning uh, framework, if they get to a thing and they see Auschwitz being labeled as a person, that might turn them off from using it. And from a machine learning point of view, this is understandable. This is a small model that is using context to try to understand what this word actually means. It looks like the small model might have never even encountered the word Auschwitz before. So our goal is to try to eliminate some of these false positives as much as we can. And we see just really bad results in things like this, which is a timestamp being labeled as a person. And if we keep on going the list, we can see kind of all of these mistakes. Uh, Buna, once again, not a person. Uh, so what I want to do is talk about some of the solutions to these mistakes and how we can kind of eliminate them from our pipeline. And believe it or not, it's actually not going to be all that difficult because we can use some pretty creative and simple methods to do complex things. Remember, in NER, it is always good to use simple methods to do complex things rather than using complex methods to do simple things. Good rule of thumb. And if you go down the list, you also see like Auschwitz III, which is a, a subcamp of Auschwitz it being labeled as uh, as a person. And so that's what we're going to kind of try to work on. So before moving forward, I want to talk about a couple different things. I'm going to just move all of this down so I can kind of write on the screen here. I want to talk about accuracy for a moment. So accuracy, when we use the word accuracy, what do we mean in the typical English language? We typically mean the rate at which something performs well or performs correctly, right? So that's what accuracy means with common speech. In machine learning, accuracy is um, is more nuanced than that. It has a, a, a different ways of being accurate. So how would you define accuracy in a machine learning setting? Well, it comes down to things like true positive versus false positive and true negative versus false negative. So let's talk about these for just a moment. A true positive is when an entity is extracted and its label does in fact correspond. So in this case, we would see, um, let me find an example for you. Uh, Amy Hackett, that is a person. That is a true positive. A false positive is when an entity is extracted and that label does not correspond to it. So in this case, we would be looking at something like Plonsk, a location. It's not actually a person. So this would be called a false positive. So that's a false positive when you have a uh, positive identification, identification that is inaccurate. True negative, this is different now, a true negative is when, let's say, for example, there's a case of Plonsk in this text that was not labeled as a person. So the, the model correctly ignored it and did not give it a person tag. That would be a true negative, a case when the model doesn't extract or provide a label to an entity that it doesn't belong to. A false negative is when, let's say there's an example of uh, this individual, Sienna, in this text, and let's say there's an instance where she was not identified. And in fact, I looked at this earlier, and there is a good example of this with the name Isek. So if we go down here, we see that it has correctly identified um, one instance of Isek, uh, but it has failed to identify uh, this other one right here. And so while the model was able to correctly identify a true positive of this one here, it missed a uh, this tag here, this uh, Mali Isek, and that would be called a false negative because it falsely presumed that that was not an entity. Why is all of this important? Well, it's important for a couple different reasons. First, those are cornerstone key terms that you must become familiar with, with any kind of machine learning, data science, NER. Um, these are terms that are used consistently and across all literature. In a lot of cases, they'll presume knowledge of them. The other reason why they're important is because they are essential for how we measure 
accuracy and machine learning. So I'm going to comment these out. I'll keep these in the GitHub repo so you all can kind of go back and look at these examples. Let's talk about how we measure accuracy. The first is precision. Precision is going to be the rate at which the uh, the degree to which a model identifies true positives. So our accuracy is our precision is going to be true positive, and the higher the precision, the more uh, the better the model is identifying true positives correctly. The lower the precision is an indication that it is uh, missing true positives. So I'm going to show you right now a model that I am currently training, and this model is going to be used for identifying and extracting. Oh, I kind of messed up the the um, layout here. Just ignore this. But if we look here on this um, model training process, we'll see both a precision, a recall, and an F score for each iteration. And this is telling me how well the model's performing as it's training. So the precision here is telling me that this model has a very high degree of accuracy for identifying locations and texts, and that it's very rarely going to mess up and identify a false positive. Recall, on the other hand, this is another example, is the degree to which the model doesn't falsely identify a true or doesn't identify a true negative or correctly misses a true negative. So in other words, how accurately your model doesn't identify false negatives. So that's kind of the precision and recall. And then we have another thing called an F score. And an F score is a is a metric that we use to kind of look at the balance between the precision and the recall. So you might be asking yourself, why do you need all these metrics for measuring and judging a named entity recognition model? Well, it's very important. So for example, let's presume we're training a model that's really good, and this is not NER, this is going to be for the sciences. Let's presume this is the classic example. Let's presume we're trying to train a model that can correctly identify cancer in patients. We, we, we care about recall, but we really want to make sure that we get all true positives, even if it means that we grab a bunch of false negatives in the process. The reason for this is because identifying cancer in a patient in, uh, is more important than, or sorry, identifying cancer in a patient successfully is more important than misidentifying cancer in a, in a patient that might have it. By this, I mean, it is, we would rather over-identify cancer in patients than miss one or two here or there, because by missing cancer, the patient will potentially die. However, if we have a person come in and talk to us and the model was just simply wrong, all we've done here is we've made somebody come into the doctor's office when it wasn't entirely necessary. So this is a case where a real world example of where precision and recall have to be thought about. So for different pipes in our pipeline, I'm going to be considering these two different metrics for what I want to do. And this comes down to an important thing that you should consider with NER, especially in something as delicate as the Holocaust, is precision and recall. For example, I, I might be okay with just missing a few locations in a text, but one of the things I don't want my model to do, because it might be traumatic to a victim of the Holocaust or a family member of the victim of the Holocaust who's trying to use my model, is I don't want the model to falsely identify a victim, so a person, as a concentration camp or as a camp or as a ghetto. This might be a little traumatic to that individual. So these are some of the ethical things that we need to think about with how we consider and how we train our model to have one accuracy metric over the other. So that's something to think about moving forward. Let's go back to our example, though, of our uh, of our model, our pipeline. So we have this, this demo right here that we've seen. We know that the, the English small model performs all right on person names, but we don't want it to identify kind of bad things like plants here or there. So what this means is that I want to make sure that person is very, very late in the pipeline. And the reason for this is because I want my earlier models to be able to um, eliminate these things as entities. So I want my my uh, my con uh, my camp model to put Buma, uh, Buna, Auschwitz, I want it to be labeling those way earlier in the pipeline so that there is no risk at later um, and uh, later in the pipeline for these entities to be still in the mix where a model can assign an entity. Because remember, as we saw in the, a couple videos ago, 
A, later pipelines, unless you give them instructions to overwrite, can't overwrite already uh, labeled entities in a text. So that's going to be what we do. We're going to make sure that our person pipe is very, very late in the pipeline. And we're going to try to get rid of all of these, um, these potential false positives earlier on. And you might be thinking to yourself, why am I bothering with the small model? Why not just use a large model? And the answer is a couple is a couple different reasons. One is that I want to make sure that all of my models, when I do some final training, have the same word vectors. If I use a large model, I'm going to be dependent upon the vectors and the weights of the large model, and I don't want that to be the case. But if we go down and use the large model, we still see the same mistakes occurring. This is the 780 megabyte model. We still see camp being labeled as a person, Buna, which is a camp being, Birkenau being labeled as a person. These, these are similar mistakes, just in some cases, different ones uh, than what we saw before. And I'm curious about how many entities that we had. I think in the last one, we have a, a couple more entities grabbed, so maybe some more true positives, maybe some more false positives. My point is we're going to do some things in this pipeline to kind of improve all of this. So let's start trying to add, at the end of the pipeline, this spacey model for just identifying people. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to come back to our main script and now if you notice, we're at 09 underscore 06. It's the same script. I'm just adding to it with each additional um, script. So what we're going to do is we've gotten that. And now we're going to work on the end of the pipeline for people. And we're going to make sure that we have a comment that we want this to be at the end of the pipeline. That's for us going forward and for users later on. So what we want to do is just like what we did up here. I'm going to close this so we can kind of see better. Uh, I'm going to close this as well. So what we want to do is we want to continue on by adding this pipe to our pipeline. Now, what we're going to do, and it might seem a little counterintuitive, we are going to use the Encore web small model for a second time. And the second time is going to put it at the end of our pipeline. Why am I doing that? Because I want to use it in the first instance to grab dates, GPEs, and NORPs and put those earlier on. However, I want to use the last one to just grab people and do some customization to it. So let's go ahead and try that right now. So what I'm going to do is I am going to start doing, let's just call this person, person NLP to distinguish it from the earlier spacey English, uh, small English model. So we're going to say spacey.load en core web SM. And now what we're going to do, just like before, we're going to grab person NER. We're going to grab the spacey, or sorry, um, person uh, NLP dot get pipe. And we're going to get that NER pipe. If you notice, that's exactly what we did up here. And just like what we did up here, we are going to add it to the pipeline. So we're going to say main NLP dot add pipe. We're going to add in NER and we're going to call this our person N NER. And that's going to um, give us some kind of indication of what its role is in the pipeline. It's a standard NER, and it's going to just do that. Now, much like our last video in which we had to create a custom function to eliminate other tags, we're going to have to do that for this one as well. And it's never good practice to copy and paste. But in this case, let's go ahead and do this. So what we're going to say, oh, and we should probably specify where we want it to come. We want it to come after... Actually, we're not going to specify anything. It's going to come at the very end of the pipeline. And if we need to, uh, we'll add some after comments later on. So what we wanted to do is we want to call this, let's call it this function person narrow. And again, just like last time, it's going to take one argument. And this time we're only interested in grabbing the person tag. And what we're going to do is we're going to just go ahead and uh, get rid of that. And we're just going to simply have one conditional statement. And that's going to be if the old entity is person. So what we want to make sure that we do is we just append that bit to L. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say that if the entity that is coming in is a person, so it's been flagged as a person by this person identifier, uh, then what we want to do is, is go ahead and just uh, append that. Elif. So this is going to be elif, um, the old int dot label is going to be in, let's say in previous labels, we got to make that, then we want to do this. So let's just add a pass right now. 
So let's say we got some previous labels. So this is going to be all the labels that we want our model to identify. So we know that we're going to have camp. We know that we're going to have ghetto. We know that we're going to have date, GPE, or sorry, that's going to be lo location, I believe is what I've changed GPE to. It is location indeed. And then we're going to have also, what's the other thing that I have this finding NORP. So if it's in this previous labels, then we want to also go ahead and just do L dot append uh, new underscore end. And so what this is going to allow for us to do is to simply go through and now identify all of these things. And we're not too concerned about it overriding date or NORP here, because again, these are going to be already labeled earlier in the model. So if we do all of this, what we're going to end up having is a document that's going to go through uh, and identify, hopefully here in this case, uh, we have to also add it. Sorry, I forgot about that. Uh, we're going to do main uh, NLP dot add pipe. And we're going to add in this custom function here. And we're going to call that name is going to be equal uh, person narrow. And we're going to make sure that that is after. We're going to make sure that's after uh, person in ER. And if you notice, it follows this exact same kind of pattern up here. Now, when we run this, it should work just fine. We should be going to the end and we NER is not defined. Ah, I add pipe NER person underscore in. What line is this in? 41. Person in ER, we have to do person in ER, typo on my part. And now, hopefully, if we've done everything, new int is not defined. Fantastic. Where did I mess that up? Uh, if old int, uh, we're just going to append old int. We're going to just append old int there. Fantastic. And now everything works correctly. If you uh, notice, when we go down, unlike in the last video, we are now identifying and extracting not only dates and locations, but we're also now identifying um, persons as well. As you can tell, our small model has correctly identified, oh, I can get rid of these. Our small model has correctly identified Meyer Bornstein as a person. And if you notice, actually, this is kind of useful. These print functions were in there by mistake. I didn't mean to do that, but it shows us what's happening. The first model found all of those cases. The second function, which is the second item in our pipe, eliminated it, brought it down to just NORP. And then this final one has actually reintroduced person into the tags. So what you're seeing here is a couple things identified. If you notice, if you remember from the last video, Treblinka was being identified as an organization that was incorrect, and it's also left it out of this instance, a good indication that our pipeline is working as intended. Now, if we go back to our demo, we'll notice a couple other problems with the person tag, and these are going to still be problems that we have to address. However, it's not going to be necessary to address them in this video because our goal is to eliminate some of these problems by um, altering the entities and putting earlier pipes in front of the person tag. And I did person now because by looking at how person is functioning and being labeled in this video, we can go back in the next, or go forward in the next videos and do steps to eliminate these mistakes from happening. So one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to introduce a, a camp model into, into the pipeline very early on that is going to grab instances of Auschwitz-Birkenau, instances of uh, Birkenau, etc. on the list. A lot of these entities that are being falsely tagged as entities uh, uh, that are, in fact, camps are going to be caught earlier on. The other thing that we're going to introduce earlier on, and I didn't originally intend for this to be in the pipeline, is instances of events. So I've already trained a model to identify specifically World War II events or events associated with uh, major events of World War II. One instance of which is the event of Kristallnacht, so the attack on the Jewish community in which they broke all of the um, the glass in the in the Jewish district, and so this is therefore called Kristallnacht, um, Glass Night in German. Uh, anyways, I can't find it at the moment, but one of these things I noticed was that the the model was flagging Kristallnacht as a person, also an incorrect identifier. 
And so one of the things I'm introducing to correct that earlier in the model is an event model that'll be able to identify correctly major events from World War II specifically and war generally. Anyways, moving forward, that's going to be some of the things we introduce. Another thing is to correct these instances of locations being tagged as people. We're going to have a location model earlier in the pipeline. And by doing all these steps, by identifying events, people, or sorry, events, locations, and um, and uh, camps and ghettos earlier in the pipeline, we are going to drastically eliminate all of these false positives that keep on coming up without doing a lot of sophisticated uh, training work. That's going to be it for this video, though. In the next video, I'm going to introduce you to uh, the camps and ghetto models, how I train them in a more complete way. And we're going to start adding them directly into the pipeline. In the video after that, we're going to look at locations and events. And in all these videos moving forward, I'm going to be very interested and focused on showing you not only the process of adding things to the pipeline, but where I acquired the data, how I did it, and why I did it the way I did. That's going to be it for this video, though. Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe down below.